Hey, I'm Doug McAllister, and this is Stories I Didn't Tell Last Sunday. And joining me today is Pastor Andy Ricketts. Andy is our Generations Pastor at Journey. And today, we're going to be talking about Generation Z. We were talking just now before we started filming, and we were going over the names of the generations. I keep forgetting what they are. I know that I'm a boomer, uh, and Rachel, my wife, is a a Gen X. And then what follows that? They're boomer and Gen X. What's the next one? There's... uh so you're a boomer, right? So I'm a boomer, Gen X, and, and then, then why? Gen Y. Is, is, is that millennials? Those are millennials, right? Okay. Yes. So it's boomers, Gen X, millennials, then uh, Gen a uh, Gen Z. Gen Z. So we're talking about Gen Z today. Gen Z. And usually, in most of the research I've done, generations are about 15 to 20 years. Yep. With the you know most of them use the 15 year mark. Uh, so Generation Z are. The kids born between 1995, 2010, and yeah. 2010. Yeah. So, which is, um, you know, a pretty big generation. Uh, 23 million Gen Z kids in America right now. And let me read this quote. This is from a sociologist talking about Gen Z. This is a very secular uh, article on Gen Z, but, you know, your job at Journey, your focus is uh, helping Journey reach. Gen Z. Gen Z yeah. uh, so this is what this guy's saying, and this is totally from the secular point of view, but it has a, I think, a lot of, um, a lot of foundation, foundational stuff that we're, that we agree with. This is what he said about these 23 million uh, Gen Z kids. They will become. This is a quote. They will become the most entrepreneurial, conservative, diverse, and educated generation the world has ever seen. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow, that's that's pretty that's a pretty uh, interesting statement. The yeah. the generation that we're raising. Every one of them has a supercomputer in their pocket. Yeah, yeah. And know? his next line said, "This is the generation that's never known the world yeah. without the internet." Without the internet. Yeah, um, I'm old enough to remember before there was an internet. Or How did a you computer. live? How did you survive? How do we even? Yeah. How did you I, get where you were supposed yeah, to be? It, it was a dark. <laughs> everything was black and white, man. You know? It was the dark ages. Yeah. So this generation has never known the, uh, a world without the internet. Most of them grew up with smartphones. Yeah, yeah. So I remember when I was a kid, and I, so I'm, I'm a millennial, um, I remember when my parents first got a computer for the yeah. house, a desktop yeah. computer. Yeah. And I remember it coming in and having no idea what it was. So was it one I, of those big screens? Yeah, it was the like the giant things? aquarium yeah. looking ones. <laughs> it took five people to get it in yeah, the house. You know what massive. I mean? One of those kind yeah. of things. It was ran on diesel. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, yeah, it was... Um, Did you have dial-up? Yeah, yeah. Did you? So you couldn't be on the phone yeah. at the same time. If or anybody called you while you're on the phone, it would knock you off the internet. Remember those days? Yeah. Remember that funny sound it made when you logged on? That's what Sound-ca- that's what hell sounds like. I think is, <laughs> is the sound of dial-up. Who, who yeah. came up with that? Man? I don't know. But it was like this creepy back noise of the computer communicating with the internet. Kids today have no idea how easy they got I know, it. Oh <laughs> man! And you had to wait for the screen to load, like sometimes thirty minutes. Yeah. You log on and it would just like spin forever. And that little, was fast. The little You're like uh, oh wow, only thirty uh, minutes. Sand, the little hourglass thing would spin over and over. You you can go you know make lunch and come back and it's still loading. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, one of my favorite things to do when I once I you know internet we figured out you know a little bit later in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, was to download music, yeah. and uh, you know you'd always have the programs, and you're like, yeah, sure, I'll put computer virus on my computer, whatever. You didn't really care then. <laughs> Who did you use to download? So music? we used LimeWire, yeah, primarily. I remember LimeWire; uh, they were uh, taken off the market bet by some judge yeah. or something. Yeah. Said it was, it was. So but Napster you know, was what a they did bit. really was, this, or was it Napster that got knocked off? Napster did. Okay. Napster had the whole issue with with the copyright yeah. and the, all that. Yeah. Yeah. So Napster was Spotify <laughs> at one time. So it's the same thing, but I guess they didn't shake all the right hands or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Got, and now it's acceptable. Now yeah. it's everywhere. You're streaming music. That's the only way you get music I now. Know. Yeah. And I just remember downloading music and you would click to download it and it would say, you know, four hours left. Yeah. And you're like, wow, that's fast. <laughs> We're downloading a song in four hours. It's <laughs> yeah. amazing. Yeah. You so. know, uh, if you watch Gardens, uh, Guardian of the Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy. The first one, yeah. Yeah, you know the uh, um, the mixtape that yeah. uh, um, 
uh, what's his name? The guy, the um, Chris Pratt. I yeah, don't know. Chris Pratt. I, I don't follow. Yeah, he's those he's movies. the he's the the Lord of Space or whatever he yeah. is. But man, he has this mixtape of all the songs from my generation. And we used to have mixtapes when I was a kid. That was the way you downloaded music. You would put the cassette in the player with the radio playing the music, and you had to be just right on time to hit record yeah. to capture your songs, man. Yeah. If you got a whole mixtape made, man, you had spent a week. <laughs> on the radio trying to catch seven songs you know you're a professional sound engineer yeah, before you, you like, even knew and then you gave it to your girlfriend like oh, i, well I made you a mixtape there you go <laughs> there you go yeah i remember the yeah. days of like so i did have cassette tapes when i was young um i had a drawer full of cassette tapes and then we moved to the cd yeah and we had cds and i just used to love like the little paper insert where you'd have the lyrics or you'd have, you'd get all the yeah. artwork and everything. And yeah. it's like now you fold it out and you get all those songs. Yeah. yeah. You knew who played instruments on every yeah, song. Yeah. had the writer. Yeah. The, the, all the guys playing the, on the song. Yeah. And it's no longer <laughs> now. Now kids just get music any yeah. minute they want it. If you want to know who it is, you got to go, you got to, you got to, you know, check on duck, duck, go. Yeah. Figure out yeah. who wrote it. You figure that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I miss those days, man, because back then, you know, if you had seven or eight songs, you know, you were like cruising. Now, mm -hmm. you know, if you have Spotify, and uh, thanks to my kids, I have Spotify now, and I, I have maybe three or four hundred songs that I didn't realize that I loved, mm -hmm. but I keep downloading. Oh, I love this song too because you know, a generation ago, if you had seven or eight on one cassette tape, you know, and you know, right before I got married to Rachel, we got married in '81, so I bought this. I bought this uh, f um, green um, Plymouth Duster. Uh, and it was, you know, a sports car, kind of jacked up, white leather seats, but only came with an AM and FM radio. So I did what every 18-year-old kid did back then. I installed an aftermarket 8-track <laughs> tape player. Dude, was I killing it back then, you man. Were, you were on top of the yeah, world. Yeah, so I had this collection of 8-track tapes. You know, I had a box with uh, all the tapes, and I'm not sure why they call it 8-track because it only had four tracks on it. That's probably a... A technical reason I don't, I don't understand, yeah. but it had four tracks with about seven songs. But sometimes the song would be cut off at the end of one track and it would continue on the next track. You know, nice technology wasn't quite what it is, <laughs> is today. But I think the eight track would have like what maybe ten or twelve songs is all that would be on there. You know, that's way before my time. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, eight track. So you never saw an eight track player? No, no. Ever really? Uh, they're in the Smithsonian. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. No, they, they really they're are. Probably though. yeah. You know, I saw a video the other day of a dad dad pranking his two uh, gen, gen z kids he bought a rotary dial phone and he brought it home nice and he plugged it in and he said now give me your smartphones i want you to call your mom on this phone yeah it's a cool little video so the kids so the whole video is them picking up the picking up the receiver and not knowing how to dial to spin, the phone, yeah. so they're punching buttons and talking into the speaker. <laughs> Call mom. You know, it's, what it's is this cord like, that it's yeah, plugged what, into? How does this even work? So he, he taught them how to use a rotary phone. Yeah, you know, and he said this is where the term dial comes from yeah. because you actually had to spin the dial to. To, to call a number. Yeah, my know? grandmother actually still has a rotary dial phone. No way. At her, like still an operational. To, my one mom had one until she house. died. My yeah. mom died in '94. She still had a rotary yeah. dial. Yeah. It's yeah. it's crazy how fast technology has yeah. moved, yeah. and you know from having smartphones now yeah. to so this generation's growing up in a world that has always had the internet yeah, and great. a smartphone and a tablet and a super fast laptop. I mean, every elementary school, you know, every high school is yeah. transitioning over to, you know, all your books are on. Uh, Everything's digital. Yeah. So they're, they're, this generation is the one that's defined as the digital natives, yeah. that they haven't known a world a without that. Yeah, and as, we, as we're trying to reach uh, this generation, that's so key to understanding the culture that we live in. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm three generations removed. You're only one removed. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's key for us you know, because the world is changing so quickly, you yeah. know, that we speak the language of this digital native Yeah. Generation. Absolutely, and that, absolutely. that's our conversation today. Hey, I want to tell a little story before we get in yep. too deep into this. So, uh, in January 2020, this is before uh, the world went nuts with the with the virus. Uh, me and my son Cam went to D.C. for the March for Life. Yep. Um, so it was his senior year, so we wanted to do something just to mark his coming of age. So we went to um, to D.C. and we spent five days. Uh, in and around the March for Life. And I must tell you, um, 
I was inspired. Yeah. I, I was brought to tears on more than one occasion. Um, on the main day, uh, when we all gathered at the uh, uh, on the National Mall, uh, if you've been to D.C., you know the National Mall stretches from uh, the uh, what's what is it the uh, Lincoln Memorial all the way to uh, the Halls of Congress. It's, so, it's uh, several miles. Yeah, it's yeah. a straight shot, and it's this beautiful reflection pool in, uh, along the sides of the mall. All the Smithsonian. Uh, institutions and all of the, you know, all the, you know, historical sites, yeah. you know, the World War II, you know, um, Martin Luther King statue, you know, it's just, it's like American history, you know, in a two mile stretch, yeah. it, it is breathtaking. Uh, so we're there. Uh, and then that day, the president was going to speak. So I was waiting there. Uh, and I looked around, Andy, and there were probably 100,000 people wow. there, because it stretched for miles. And most of them were Gen Z kids. Yeah. And there was a band leading worship uh, on the mall. And these kids were kneeling and raising their hands and crying and praying. And then they were celebrating and high-fiving. Uh, and a lot of them were carrying signs that said, I am the pro-life generation. Come on. It just gave me so much hope for America, Amen. man. You know, just really just renewed in my heart that, okay, you know, we haven't lost this battle yet. Yeah. And it's a cultural battle. We're in the middle of a war culturally, you know. But Jesus said something that echoes through the years. The truth will make you free. Yeah. And that's still <clears throat> what holds the church together. We have to just cling to the truth of God's word. In spite of what the culture is saying, in spite of what uh, you know, big uh, big tech is saying, and social media, and mainstreams, and all these other voices that are drowning out. You know, we got a lot of disinformation, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of subversive information. But the simple truth of God's word will set a person free. You know, and it gave me hope, man, because there was there were schools, there were universities, there were uh, high schools, junior high, and they had their T-shirts on. So there was just these groups, you know, with hundreds and, uh, you know, dozens and sometimes smaller groups that were there for one reason, just to pray for our nation, yeah. to worship Jesus, and to stand for, for unborn children. It gave me a lot of hope, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's so this generation, and, you know, you said it earlier as being an entrepreneurial generation. Yeah. What marks a lot of what we see, you know, me specifically what I see with Journey students, but just, you know, overall is that they want to make a difference in some way. Yeah. They want to, they're, they're literally a generation of world changers. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's refreshing to see that, you know, and I think, yeah. I think you see that in everything that they do, you know, there's the GoFundMes for yeah. some project, right? Yeah. There's all of these, there's students who are leading. We have one of our students at Journey Students who is kind of leading a, um, a fundraising effort for Speed the Light. Yeah. Um, and we have several that are doing that, but it's just a generation that seems to want to make yeah. a change. This guy said 77% of Gen Z's uh, students are extremely interested in giving their life to a cause. Yeah, absolutely. dude, that's a, that's a high percentage, man. It's three quarters, eight out of ten and, yeah. of these kids say, "I want to give my life to something bigger than myself." Man, what an opportunity for us to reach this generation for the cause of Christ, which is the greatest mm -hmm. of all causes. And he said in his survey, twenty six percent of them are already volunteering. Yeah, we're talking about children and teenagers. Yeah. One in four already volunteered, like you just said, one mm -hmm. of, some of our students raising money for Speed the Light. If you don't know what Speed the Light is, Speed the Light is a part of our national fellowship mm -hmm. where our students raise money to support missionaries by buying vehicles for their mission and for other equipment for church planting. Yeah. You know, yeah. recently, uh, uh, our Speed the Light in Louisiana raised $40,000 to buy a new vehicle for uh, Luis and Lourdes yeah. Padilla, who are, who are church planting directors in Argentina. They yeah. go to the unreached in the mountains of Argentina, and our students bought them a car. Yeah. That, that just blows my mind, Yeah, man. it's amazing that yeah. what difference that they can make. Yeah. And what's, what's key, I think, in reaching that generation, because you have that idea that, hey, they want to make a change, they want to they volunteer, they want to be a part of something, right. is that uh, the other side of it is you said they're so educated, right? Yeah. 
the most uh, educated generation in the history of the world. Absolutely. And that's and crazy. Part of it is that, hey, they've got all the information in their pocket, right? Yeah. It's uh, all there. But yeah. where we step in is they have the knowledge, but yeah. where's the wisdom? Yeah. So is is really is really mm. being able to take that yeah. and, and and guide them in the right path to yeah. use that information that they have for the right purposes, right? In the right way. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the that's kind of like our charge now is like to try to figure out how can we get them to make a positive change, right? Yeah. Because they're going to make a change for something. I mean, that really sparked a thought, too, when you said that our kids, our, and my grandkids and your kids, have in their pocket all the knowledge of the world yeah. at their fingertips. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom had a, uh, a set of encyclopedias. This is back in the 70s, so it's a long time ago. Uh, but we bought them at a garage sale, so it was missing like two letters, like S and and B, two really important letters. So if I ever did a, a term paper, I couldn't go any <laughs> subject from the letter B or S yeah. because no botany, there's nothing no, I, I could do yeah. any science project because yeah. the, you know. But anyway, uh, so but I remember you know that was the internet for us, yeah. you know, the pages of, you know, the Encyclopedia Britannica, or I think I had a, I forget which one we, we had, it was red and black, I don't, I don't remember the brand name, but we spent a lot of time in the encyclopedia, and if I needed an S, I had to go to the library <laughs> in town to look up the S library, but, but now all of that knowledge is available at the tap of a few buttons on your on your smartphone. Absolutely. Yeah, but wisdom is a whole nother and that's Issue. that's the the yeah the line there is going from knowledge. I mean, you've got you know everything that's on the internet isn't true, right? Yeah. But getting them to to realize that, yeah, and and spinning this in a way that um, that they can get wisdom out of it, yeah. And I think that's really the most important thing, you know, it, to make the positive change that they want to make. Yeah, so. yeah, that yeah that that is so true. Uh, and you know, all of the um, all of the activities that are available can become a distraction yep. or it can become a platform mm -hmm. depending on how you use it. And of course you're doing a whole lot of activity this summer, you know, yeah. between a uh, youth camp and VBS and kids camp and the trip to Atlanta, yeah. you know, journey students are loaded down with activity, but all of them are purpose based and they're focused yeah. on faith and their relationship with Jesus. And I'm really excited about, about the trip you're about to take. Yeah. To Atlanta. Let's talk about Atlanta a little bit. Yeah. I know you're bringing, uh, how many people are you bringing? When are you leaving? Give us some, some details. Yeah, so we're taking a team of 22 wow. to Atlanta uh, to Frontline Response. Um, used to be Atlanta Dream Center. They've just switched names, but yeah. Frontline Response. Um, we leave next Monday, so July yeah. 5th, we're going yeah. out. We'll be out the whole week. Yeah. And what we do is we spend a week there serving Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, So we what do, do you do during that week? What's so our we do uh, a mixture of different outreaches. Uh, one of them is children's ministry, mm -hmm. where we'll take our team to the uh, projects, uh, to these different apartment buildings and complexes, and we basically bring Sunday school to them. Wow. We go door to door. With COVID, they've had a few changes, but what we do is we go door to door. We play some activities with them. We tell them Jesus loves them. Yeah. We give them an opportunity to accept Jesus. Wow. We've seen salvations happen door to door yeah. in children's ministry. We're playing tic-tac-toe with kids, right? You know, That's um, amazing. So it's amazing, and we basically we split up into teams, and we're just all through this. And the yeah. cool part is that Frontline does this all year. So when they see the white vans pull up in, yeah. these kids come; they're ready. They know right. they're happening. flooding out there. They know everything yeah, that's so this happening. This is like such an eight housing. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So we go to different, uh, a couple different ones yeah. um, throughout the time that we're there. Uh, so that's one of the big ministries there. Yeah. Another one is called Compassion Night, and yeah. what Compassion Night is the, the homeless ministry yeah. outreach. And what we do is um, now it's with again with COVID, they've had to change some of the things, but we call it Mobile Compassion Night. Yeah. We spend that day prepping food. They get donations given in, prepping food, putting bags together, getting drinks together, and we load them up in the white vans, and we drive to the little pocket of communities, um, homeless communities. That so are, this is for so, the homeless. Mm -hmm. You do it at night. We do it, yeah, evening time. In the evening. Yeah, Got evening it. time. So, so you feed them a meal, and what else? And we pray for them. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we just get to talk to them. I think the biggest thing about Compassion Night mm -hmm. is making them feel like they're human. Tell the penny story. Yeah. So I've heard you tell it several times, yeah. but it always leaves a lump in my throat. Man. Yeah. So the biggest, um, one of the things they told us my first year that I went, and this is now my fourth year going, um, they told us the story of the penny and how when you're interacting with 
uh, homeless community or even children's or any of those, um, a lot of times they feel like a penny. And for instance, if, if you were to walk down the street yeah. and you found a penny on the ground, you're probably yeah. not going to pay it any attention. Walk, you, you probably don't right even by, see it. Walk right by it. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to. You're definitely not picking it up. Yeah. You're not walking out in traffic to yeah, go get it. If it's a dollar? It. Or dollar, yeah, maybe so. If yeah, it's paper, five, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, even if it's a quarter, you're yeah. probably not really yeah. doing much, yeah. right? And um, it really is kind of how he, they use the analogy when they told us the story. That's how those who are homeless feel. Yeah, they f- they're all out on the street. They're there. I get it. But people don't look at them. And, and people, one of the stats that, don't see them. that that really just kind of hits is that um, on average, the homeless, those who are homeless only hear their name once every six months. So they can easily forget who they are, right? Every six months, twice and a that year. that always hits me hard. Yeah. They only receive eye contact once every three months. So hmm. the the biggest thing, yeah, there's a there's a need to feed them, right? Because they're they're struggling and yeah. they don't have drinks, they don't have food, they yeah. you know those Shelter. things. But but almost equally as important is making them feel human again, making eye contact, yeah, being asking able, them their name, yeah. So um, to me, my passion when we go out there is compassionate. That's my yeah. favorite one. Is the yeah. I love it all. I see but that. Uh, if I pick one, I mean, it's it's absolutely compassionate. Any and, stories from your past trips in Atlanta yeah. that stand out? Yeah. So Give us one or two. One. Um, one. I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to not tear up here, but okay. this is one. Just well, to I'll cry with you. Just Sorry. to warn everybody. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll go with you. Yeah. So my first year, we did. Um, it was not the children's ministry, but what we were doing is a. We went to a Section 8 housing, and we were cleaning up. It was like a neighborhood cleanup outreach. Um, Half of us went to this little, they call it a nature trail. That's a very generous term for what it was. (laughs) There were some trees, and then there was trash everywhere. (laughs) That's what they called it. Uh, And then the other half were cleaning up their little playground area. Now, when we got there, again, I said, they know the white vans come in, they come flooding out, right? So they had kids coming out to play, and we're not going to tell them no. We're not going to play with them, right? Right. So... um, our team that went to go clean up the playground, they came back after we kind of debriefed and they told us this story of uh, one of our girls on our team uh, was on that cleanup team. And uh, this little girl from the, from the neighborhood came up to her and said, uh, oh, I really like your shoes. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, thank you, thank you. And then the little girl was like, oh, well, where'd you get them from? And um, our, you know, our girl was like, "Hey, I think my mom got them for me for Christmas." Yeah. And this little girl looked at her and said, "You have a mom?" Oh my god! And it was like it, you know. And I wasn't even on the team that was doing the the cleanup of the playground, but just hearing that story, it almost makes it, you know, you take those things for granted, right? I mean, having a mom, right? Uh, having shoes, having all of yeah. these things, and this kid wasn't even worried about the shoes. It was you, you have, have a mom. A mom. Courtney told me a story about um, one of the little kids she was talking to in the gunfire. Oh, you, yeah. You, could you tell that story too? I, I think yeah. I could. Yeah. So it's another um, it's another children's outreach day. Yeah. Uh, this was one where we were actually going and doing the children's ministry out there. Right. And um, <clears throat> so there's they, they have safety protocol, right, when we're out there. Yeah. Um, when we're out there, we always have a leader from Frontline mm-hmm. with us. They know the community. They know the people by name. They know everything, yeah. right? And... Uh, This one day we were out there and we heard this kind of loud bang. We weren't Mm -hmm. sure what it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, without alerting us and making a panic, they Mm -hmm. were like, okay, we got to wrap up. We got to go because it's just safety first, right? Yeah. And uh, so we're out there. And and one of the little kids who Courtney was talking to at the time could kind of pick up on there was something happening. Yeah. And uh, this little kid had to be six years old, looked at Courtney and said, uh, because our, we weren't sure, is it a firework? Is it guns? Right. It, you know, and it could have been whatever, yeah. right? right? This little kid who's six years old right. said, oh, that's not gun. That's not gunfire because gunfire, you know, doesn't Sounds sound just like that. Wow. And the fact that a six-year-old can distinguish between gunfire and fireworks, and fireworks yeah. is one of those things that, again, you don't think a, a six-year-old shouldn't know that, yeah. shouldn't have to know that. And he already and, knows. And he already can tell. That yeah. there's a difference there, yeah. and that just lets you know, hey, that's a normal thing for them to hear, yeah. um, at least enough to be able to distinguish between that and fireworks or whatever else it could have been. Yeah. So there's been, you know, and, and that happens every year. Um, another time, just real quickly, one of the other outreaches that we do is uh, it's called Princess Night, mm-hmm. and what Princess Night is, it's um, there's a huge 
sex trafficking industry in Atlanta and the surrounding mm-hmm. areas. And it's, right. it's global, right? It's, right. it's everywhere. But yeah. you know, when we're in Atlanta, it's, you don't realize how prevalent it is right. till you're there on the outreach. So Princess Night is that. What we do is we drive around in vans. We hand a rose to a lady. Um, the, the women minister to the women. Mm-hmm. And guys, we're just kind of back as security, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, without arms folded looking right. suspicious. But we're right. just there to, to make sure everything's good. Sure. Um, it never had an issue, right? Never right. once had an issue with it. But this one time, this was my wife's, Courtney's, her first, um, her first mission trip that we went on. And... Uh, they stopped at this one spot. Normally what you do is you stop at one spot. You may be there tops 10 minutes talking to somebody. It, it may be five minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's quick. Pray with them. Give them a rose. Mm-hmm. Give them a card, basically, to Frontline. They do have a safe house that if they want to get off the streets. Yeah. Well, they stopped at this one stop for maybe an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were talking to this lady. And I, I remember her name's Tori. Mm-hmm. I still remember her name. And uh, it was my wife's first one. She's out there. She's praying with them. They're talking. They're talking. This lady is like, hey, I want to get off the street. I want to get off the street. Okay. So immediately, if anybody says, I want to get off the street, outreach is over. That's where our focus is. Let's get them out. Mm -hmm. So then she kind of gave an excuse. She said, oh, I got to go back to the house and get some things. And usually, unfortunately, when that happens, they don't come off the street. You know, they're going to go back and whatever. Right. Well, and still talking to her, they found out that she wanted to go back and get her son's ashes. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know really the backstory, how oh old the son, God. you know, anyway. But she wanted to go back. She, she had it in like a little... She didn't street until she had her son's ashes with her. Yeah. So she had it in a little necklace type thing, some yeah. kind of something. And um, so we left, and we went back to the church where we were kind of stationed at. And that whole time, there's a team that's doing prayer, intercessory prayer, worship's going on. Right. We're praying for the teams that are out there. We're praying for those that we're going to reach. And uh, we get back, and everybody's, you know, my wife, this is her first experience with missions, right? So yeah. she's wrecked, right? Yeah. And uh, they come on the microphone. They're like, hey, we just got word that we have somebody going to get Tori right mm-hmm. now. She's called, and actually she's going to be brought to a safe house oh, Jesus. tonight. And that's that's one person that you see impacted, yeah. but y- you can't count how many seeds are planted because yeah. one person makes, or somebody's out there yeah. speaking to truth to people. So yeah. there's countless stories. I could be here all day talking yeah. about it, but it is a life-changing Man, experience. And I really think taking uh, Journey students, you, you're taking 20 or 25 people, 22 of 22 us 22 people total. with you to Atlanta, you know, the the long-term impact on the lives of those students mm. and it's going to be immeasurable, yeah. you know, the compassion. I know on the short-term outreaches and we did a, uh, a podcast a few weeks ago, Pastor Ken and I did, if you want to go back and watch it, it's a few weeks ago. Uh, but we did a, a podcast talking about short-term outreach and I think journey's done, I don't know, 50 or six, I don't, I've got the number of Pastor Ken told me a lot, yeah. you know, and then I was a, a missions pastor for 10 years before I was a senior pastor, and I did a ton of short-term outreaches with um, uh, in in my ministry. So I think Rachel and I counted. We've been to like a hundred, almost a hundred different trips between what we led personally and what our churches led, in about thirty or forty nations, you know. But the biggest impact is not really what you do there, which is a very important. You know, the women that are rescued, the children that are ministered to, and the you know the lives that are changed. But it's what God does in you. Yeah. While you're there, the heart that's broken yeah. for the lost, yeah. you know, and the passion you develop for the Great Commission, mm. you know, it's just immeasurable. You know, it shapes a person's life. You know, I'm so proud of the students at Journey who are raising money for Speed the Light. Yep. They've, they've caught the vision, you know, proud of Hunter, what Hunter's doing. You know, he's really just taking ownership, mm-hmm. you know, in the Great Commission, you know. And I think that is the, the long-term um, impact that we can't even measure, yep. you know, because it'll go past you and me and our ministry. When we're done, our kids and their kids will still be carrying yeah. on the, you know, the gospel and the ministry. And I think the important thing too, like you, like you said there, is that when you are impacted to the level that you take that home, yeah, that's what the goal is. Yeah, because we're in Atlanta for one week, right? Right. We we see seeds planted. We see. You know, we see people taking off the streets. We see all of these great numbers. Right. But if it ends that Sunday that we leave Atlanta, yeah. then that I don't think that's what Jesus 
has us to do. I right. think he has us to to be impacted there yeah. and to be able to take it home. Yeah. We've that had lights student, the fire. Yeah, yeah, we've had students who coming home, we always have kind of a debriefing hangout yeah. day. Right. And we have students from the first year mission trip who still tell me I carry around a little bag with chips and a little water bottle in yeah. case I see somebody who's yeah. hungry on the street. Wow. And and that's that's what it's about. Yeah. It's it's taking this home. Yeah, we're not in Atlanta every day, all right. day, right? But there's a mission We're here. on planet Earth every day. Absolutely. You're in a city with people. Now, you guys are there for like six days, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but you also spend one day having fun. Yeah. So tell us about the fun day, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, we kind of give the kids an experience in the mission, but also want them to have, yeah. you know, some relationship time and have some fun. So what's fun day like? Absolutely. So, so like you said, so we go there, we spend... Uh, Monday's our travel day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are straight outreach yeah. all day. Every day. The whole time from yeah. the time you wake up till 2 in the morning. I mean, right. it's, it's full go. Yeah. So what we decided is that um, we don't have to stay Saturday. We yeah. could technically come home Saturday. Right. But we want to give them something fun to do. Right. Um, one of the biggest parts of, you know, of this missions trip, one of the parts is that the team building that happens yeah. on it and the, the, the stories that you're going to get for yeah. years to come. I still talk to people, yeah. you know, from my first mission trip. Yeah. This hey, makes, you remember when this happened? This makes five for you, right? The, I be- or four. I think it's four. Okay. Yeah. I th- yeah I, so I, I went on one and I've, this is my third one to lead. Yeah. I, it, yeah. It's all. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so what we do is, uh, we we go to a water park. Yeah. We've gone to a, uh, an amusement park before, uh, last year, because of COVID, <laughs> the only place that we could go was the aquarium, but yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was air conditioned, you know, which is a welcome yeah. right. uh, thing. Yeah. So, um, but we get to go there. We get to have fun. We get to just kind of breathe yeah. after a week of really heavy yeah. um, ministry that's right. going on, you know, mm-hmm. stories that, you know, things that are, you're still impacted. Right, but right. we get to go have fun. We get kind to kind of decompress and de-stress. Yeah. And so what are y'all doing this year? Yeah, we're going to the water park this year. Oh, so we're man. going to Six Flags Water Park. Holy cow. That's in Atlanta? That's Yeah, right outside of Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, so we go there, and uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity because you have the thrill seekers who yeah. want to go on the slide that's, you know, yeah. Thousands of feet high, and, yeah. then, and then you've got the ones who are like, just give me a lazy river for yeah. a couple hours. I'm going to yeah. just take a nap on the lazy That's river. That's my idea of water park, uh, a nice tube in the lazy river. Yeah. And you ever notice that every water park, people call that thing the lazy river, even though it's usually not the name of it? It's never it. called the lazy river. I know. No, nobody ever calls it the lazy river except the people who use it, you know. I mean, it's the it's a fitting title. It, it is. is. It's a lazy What are you doing? Yeah. So I'm, some kids are sliding down slides. Others are riding the lazy others river. Others are just chilling. Yeah. I'm kind of a mix between the two, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. I'll go on a thrill ride, but yeah. So you're there all day, and when do you do your uh, uh, debriefing? So um, interesting. So when we're on the trip, we also have our team. This is something we've implemented. Mm. It's not a requirement, but we've implemented two things um, that what they call in reaches. Yeah. So we have outreach, and then we have in reach. That's sure. kind of a team building yeah. moment. Uh, we have every person, adult, student, whatever on the trip, prepare a devotional. Mm-hmm. And throughout the week, we sprinkle them throughout. And they, the, the design is to, to encourage those who are on the trip to kind of bring some reality behind it and, yeah. um, and really to kind of stretch them spiritually too. You yeah. know, hey, they're getting in the Word. They're preparing a devotional. Yeah. Some of these people have never spoken publicly ever, you know, but, yeah. um, but we have them do that. Um, and then another one that we do is what's called Words of Life. Yeah. <clears throat> and Words of Life. Maybe my favorite part of the whole week. It's amazing. Yeah. So with Words of Life, everybody sits, uh, gets a turn to sit in the middle of the group, and we all kind of circle around them. Right. And we take however long, and maybe five minutes, maybe one minute, whatever. For speaking, every person. For every person speaking life. So a person, person sits in the middle, and then every team member says something positive about them. Yeah, and it's it, we really yeah. encourage them to... Um, Think a little deeper, not yeah. to be like, you've got cool hair. You're yeah. really funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like but, your uh, head. yeah, yeah <laughs> things like that. Yeah. But it, but they do. Um, I, I have a plaque for my first year. This was gifted by um, Kirk and Brittany. They made yeah. this little plaque uh, that has a couple words. It has my name in the middle, it has a penny in there yeah. because of the penny story. Yeah. And uh, then it's got several words around it that were words that were spoken into me. Yeah. And I just, it, I keep it in my house and I'm able to look at it and yeah. be like, okay. You know, when you kind of feel down or you Imagine feel forever. something, it's like, okay, this is what people think, yeah. really. Like, this is how I make people feel and yeah. things like that. So it is it is a transformational moment. It is. Um, you know, this gener- it's kind of talking about this generation. One of the things that I found, and I've, I've been a sixth grade teacher for the past several years, yeah. and uh, 
I just find that it's not always the case, but a lot of how they speak to each other is in a condescending way. Yeah. And it maybe is a joke or they're, they're saying right. it's a joke, but, and it is 12 year old boys too. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. kind of so, natural for, and it happens. And yeah. I don't think it's just this generation. I think it's yeah. just been normal forever. Yeah. Like humanity. just kids. That's what we do. And, and even adults yeah. sometimes that's where we're yeah. at. 12 year old boys are very honest. Oh yeah. They'll yeah. tell you exactly what you're they're thinking. They're not sugarcoating <laughs> anything. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly what it is. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. So, but they're so used, they're not, it's it's foreign. It's weird for them to yeah. hear something positive yeah. said about them. Mm-hmm. You know, they may not even get that at home, which is tragic. You know, like mm-hmm. hey, uh, you know, I love you. Even yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's like they don't know how to take that because they're just not used to hearing those things. Yeah. And um, you know, the words of life helps that. You yeah. know, it, it kind of uh, it's awkward at first. Um, yeah. See, I'm a words of affirmation person. Yeah, that's I, your love language. I love that. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm I'm big on words of affirmation. So yeah. I I love it so yeah. much. Yeah. It helps me out, and yeah. um and I love giving words of life too. So yeah. it's not just receiving. It's I just I'm I'm big on words of affirmation. Yeah. But uh, so it's one of my favorite moments. When does trip. that happen in the context of the trip? That's all throughout the week. Oh, so every you do that night, every night basically. Every night, yeah. Powerful. After we've been doing outreach yeah. all day, yeah. we're exhausted. We yeah. smell bad. You yeah. know, what I mean, everything. We get to sit down. Yeah. And and somebody gets to speak life into you, and, yeah. and it always happens that yeah. it's just in the moment when you need it the yeah. most, right? When we were leading missions trips, we did that on the last day, but I can see the wisdom of. Um, doing it throughout the whole week. Yeah. I probably, if I was redoing it now, I'd, I would probably do it um, more, but we would do it on the last day. And it would last like sometimes four or five hours yeah. where every person had an opportunity to say something about every other person. And we would write them down, mm-hmm. you know, like if there was 20 people on the team, we would give that person when they left 20 positive affirmations yeah. about their life to put in their Bible and to bring home, yeah. you know? And I remember I one of those trips a lot. And every time, I would look forward to it because I'm like you, you know, and maybe all of us are like this. We yeah. need words of encouragement and affirmation. It may have been my favorite time of the whole the whole trip, you know. Yeah. And we'd always cry and <laughs> laugh. You know, it was almost just, you know, freeing and yeah. fun and all those things kind of rolled into one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, there's tears to go yeah, around. I mean, it's, is, everybody's man. crying. And, right. And, and you come away connected to that people, that, that group of people like, you know, maybe more so than any other group you've ever been with. You mm-hmm. just form a bond. You may never see them again or spend a lot of time with them, yeah. but you always remember what they spoke into your life. Yeah, I, it's definitely something I remember. It's, um, you know, like speaking about that, like how we have, this is now my fourth one, each mission trip year, yeah, is almost like its own little family. Yeah, like you still remember that. Like really you'll is. see somebody and you'll be like, "Hey, mm-hmm. remember when this happened?" I, I remember. <laughs> it's a funny story. My my first year when I went, um, we tell everybody to bring water bottles, refillable. Yeah. You know, sure. they'll, they'll have the metal ones or whatever. Right. And every time, like for instance, we'd be in words of life, or we'd be in a devotional, we'd be yeah. in a pretty deep moment. Yeah somebody's water bottle would fall over yeah. and just break the awkwardness and <laughs> ding, you know, it's so loud. Yeah, it was and just, it just, it yeah. became like, at first it was like, Oh, that's kind of annoying that oh, that sorry. happened. Yeah. And, and all throughout the week, yeah. it's like, for real, this yeah. water bottle is still like, yeah. this is always in these awkward moments <laughs> right. that just kind of breaks the, the tension of yeah. the room sort of, but that's a joke that we still go back and I'll talk to, to Gavin because yeah. Gavin was a part of that. And yeah. I'm like, Bro, you remember those water bottles that would fall? Like, or like if something seems pretty deep, I'll be like, Gavin, yeah. can you just tip over your water bottle real quick to break? Isn't this? it funny how the big things in life are really just the little things? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you think what's going to be really important in this whole trip? Somebody knocked over a water bottle. <laughs> yeah. You know why is that a big? It, but it, it in life, yeah. the big things are really just the little things. Amen. You know, yeah, it's definitely so true. There's so much about. Um, you know, what God does in a person. My very first mission trip was to Mexico in 1986. Uh, Four of us went, and man, I connected up with those guys in a way that I never saw coming. You know, you you think, first of all, we drove for 20, 22 hours, you know, in in the the van together, which builds community, man. You're on a road trip with four men. It just builds community in ways that you don't even want to really talk about, (laughs) you know. Uh, But we drove all the way to, uh, I think we went to Mazatlan, which is in in the mountains, the uh, Sierra Madre um, 
Occidental Mountains, which is on the west coast of Mexico. We drove all the way over there, and we did outreach all week long. We preached every night in this church, man. But it was just, it was a pivotal week in my life. It just, you know, at that time, I think I was, I was working in the fast food. I just got out of Bible college, and I had a job at a fast food restaurant. I was managing a fast food uh, restaurant. So it really just changed the, you know, the trajectory of my whole life. Yeah. You know, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Well, for me, um, my first mission trip, the water bottle year that I was yeah. just talking about, yeah. that summer was the most transformational for me. It's when I felt to call to ministry was yeah. that year. Uh, we did was it the, in Atlanta or just on that, in that area? It was, it's hard to, it was in between there. I, I had a confirmation yeah. about a week or two later. Yeah. So right after the mission trip, like the next week we had camp. So it was my first year doing camp. Yeah. I was just serving and I was just like, really, ultimately I was hanging out with Kirk. Like he yeah. was my friend. I was like, I just want to help you out. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. so we went to camp and I, I had kind of been tossing around the idea. I'd been serving for a little bit yeah. of just like getting some more, information about what ministry yeah. is really it wasn't yeah. even like feeling yeah. called to it i just wanted to get a little know a little bit more about it right and um kirk had mentioned uh Lassam to me which i had never heard of i never right. heard of Lassam. i didn't know what it was but he said several of the um those at journey had gone through it or right. were going through it mm-hmm. and um so I was like, okay, I'll look into it. I looked into it. Super affordable. Yeah. It wasn't anything that was, you know, I wasn't going to carry any debt because right. of it. It was right. a, it was a month to month commitment type mm-hmm. thing. And I was like, okay, this sounds good for me. But yeah. immediately, kind of doubt started creeping in. And it, silly looking back at it, but it's yeah. like that's sixty whatever dollars that I can spend on yeah. groceries or right. whatever. And yeah, I was kind of questioning, yeah. doubting. Yeah. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I went to camp and. Um, kind of had it made up in my mind. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just bite the bullet for one, yeah. one month, right? Um, so this was Friday of camp. At this point, Friday was still a day of camp or right. whatever. Anyway, it was my payday. Yeah. And uh, just a backstory is, uh, again, I was teaching at the right. time. I was, right. I was in the public school. And if you do trainings like throughout the year, you get uh, what's, you know, you get a stipend pay yeah. for various trainings and it could be on anything, whatever. And they're not always the most timely. Yeah. The stipends will come whenever they decide to push it through or whenever whatever. Yeah. And, and and when you look at it online, it doesn't really remind you what it's from, but yeah. it doesn't really matter. Yeah. The school board's giving I me money. I did training somewhere in the past. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? So yeah. anyway, so what I did uh, that Friday, I still was like, let me check the bank just to make sure yeah. that I've got enough money. I knew I had yeah. enough money to do it, but I still was just yeah. thinking this. Yeah. I opened up my bank account and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. I had a stipend pay that was the to the dollar amount that it cost for registration and a first class <laughs> for Lassam for that month. I mean, it was it was to that. You it's know, like I still have the picture saved on my phone, yeah. screenshot of it, because I, I look back at that and I'm like, I think God's in this. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't even remember what the training was. I don't yeah. remember anything from that training. I don't I you know what I mean? I'm not sure yeah. what it I don't even know if I went to a training. Yeah. Maybe just something happened. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, but Maybe they mixed the paperwork. It was the exact amount you needed to get. So you went that year, and, and you finished your third year already, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've gone through three years. So since that day, uh, yeah. I I had perfect attendance. Yeah, <laughs> I wow. didn't I didn't skip you a didn't class. Miss a month? I didn't wow. miss one month. Man. And I just went through three levels. So you'll be getting ordained real soon. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's look. I think twenty twenty three yeah. is when. And you're ended. you're about to enroll in uh, bridges. Bridges, huh? yeah, yeah, in November. Yeah. Yeah. I don't degrees, want to stop learning. How many degrees do you need, Andy? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> you keep stacking them up, bro. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it, it, to me, yeah. it's not even about the degree. I, I just told, uh, yeah. you know, when I was thinking about it, it's like, hey, if a degree comes with it, that's yeah. cool or whatever. You I just, just, you just don't want to stop learning. You want to know yeah. the theology and God's word. And yeah. I, I love that about you, man. You're yeah. always learning, you know, yeah. which is part of our, uh, you know, our four values for leaders, S-T-A-R, you know, yeah. be, we will always be teachable. Yeah. And I love that. You know, if you don't know about Bridges Christian College, uh, you can check it out, bridgeschristiancollege.com. And he's enrolling uh, for his, are, are you getting a degree in pastoral, pastoral ministry? Yeah, pastoral ministries. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful online school, yeah. fully accredited. Uh, you'll earn a, a, a degree that transfers to any yeah college in america it's a great school i'm so proud of you man, for, for, you. for being passionate about god's word yeah. i love that about you well, we're going to wrap it up we got about 10 minutes left so let me give a, a couple of thoughts um about gen z that we are focusing on at yeah. journey gen z and the economy check this out generation z 
controls about $44 billion a year in spending. Wow. That blows my mind. These kids have that much money in their pockets. <laughs> the average Gen Z gets almost $100 a month in allowance just to do whatever they want to do with. Kids, uh, yeah. I used to ask my dad for a quarter when I was a kid. Can I get a quarter, dad? <laughs> I remember my first paycheck. Yeah. yeah. You know, looking back on it now, it's like nothing. It was like 200 bucks or something yeah. crazy or whatever like that. And I'm yeah. like, I can pretty much retire now. Yeah, I'm good. Like, exactly. I don't, I've, good, I've got money for the year. <laughs> yeah, man. My first job, I made $3.35 an hour. Wow. And that's when I had a job working 40 hours a week. <laughs> These kids are bringing home more in their allowance than I made at a full-time job back wow. in the 70s. You know, $44 billion a year. It's going to be one of the wealthiest generations yeah. in the history of the world. Wow. Yeah, there's a transfer of wealth going on right now. So I, uh, I took this class that was taught by... Um, uh, the Green family, who owns Hobby Lobby, and the founder of Hobby Lobby did the teaching, and he rolled out some charts and gave out some amazing information, and he said that in the next 20 years, America will see the largest transfer of wealth ever wow. in history. I think he said it's tr in, in the trillions. Mm -hmm. So as, as baby boomers and Gen Xers retire, their nest eggs, their retirement, their real estate holdings, their investments will, it will amount in the trillions, and they're going to pass it down to their children and their grandchildren. Wow. So we're going to see a transfer of wealth like the world's never seen, and it's going to land in the hands of mostly of these Gen Z kids. Yeah. You know, so God's up to something, man. God, yeah. God, you know, like David set aside wealth for Solomon. Solomon built the temple. It wasn't with his wealth. Yeah. It was with David's wealth. Yeah. You know, David was a billionaire, yeah. uh, and he saved his money and gave it to Solomon, and Solomon used it to build the most glorious temple the world has ever seen. You know, but it was a transfer of what it's happening again right now. Uh, here's another stat that I found astounding. Um, these kids have a combined buying power of their own money, and of their parents' money that they influence. Like when your kids pick the restaurant or pick the movie or, you know how that is, yeah. if you're raising kids. Yeah, we never know. pick the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Kids. Yeah, your kids do. <laughs> Listen to this. They control, you know, they personally have $44 billion in yeah. their pocket. They control $600 billion of family spending. Wow. Yeah. $600 billion. Yeah. So these children are really, you know, living a, a whole different life than you and I even live, that yeah. you live, and you're much younger than me, yeah. but even that, that, that you live. Here's the last one. Uh, One-third of Gen Z plans to retire before they're 60. Hmm. Man, that is unheard. They'll be yeah. in their 50s, you know, yeah. but it's, the world's changing rapidly, yeah. you know, so they're going to retire before they're 60. Most of them think they will because they're going to they're gonna write an app or they're going to, you know, record a song or open a studio. Be an NFL or, player. Yeah, or yeah. something. You know, they're yeah. going to do something that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and we've, we've learned through the last 18 months that most of what we do can be done at home. Yeah. You know, we all became, you know, stay-at-home employees for the most part. They're the part. innovative ones that are thinking of new ways yeah. to do things. Yeah. You know, with yeah. having the internet their whole life. Yeah. Somebody said that... Uh, uh, I forgot who it was now, but this generation will invent ways to do church that we've never thought of. Yeah. You know, of it's course. It's already happening. Yeah. We, we see it happening right in front of us, you know, with all of the technology. But who knows what the next generation of digital uh, development is going to bring to us. Yeah. You know, we don't know. These kids are, are, are inventing it. You know, they're, they're thinking of it. All right. Here's their values real quick. Uh, Gen Z's values. Uh, extremely, 77% of them want to give their life to a cause. Yeah higher than, than, than themselves. 75% um, of them are concerned about the, the planet. You yeah. know, my generation and your generation were not as passionate, even though, you know, my dad was a farmer. He was, you know, we, we did um, green things before they were called green things. Yeah. We, we recycled everything and we cared for the land and, and so forth. But these kids have grown up in you know, non-country uh, settings. They're in ur mostly urban or suburban settings, but they're passionate about uh, about the planet, you know, which is, I believe, key to us understanding how to reach this generation. Here's the last thing about, about their values. Um, uh, most kids have at least 10 apps on their smartphone, uh, and quite a few kids, more than 10%, have 40 different apps on wow. their phone. Wow. Yeah. 
lots of information. Yeah. Lots of it's overwhelming. Just yeah, they're they're bombarded with technology. So constantly, it's, it's overwhelming. All right, let's wrap it up. Talk about journey students. Yeah. Tell me where we're going. Tell me what's happening. You yeah. know, I, I know we're still getting our strategic plans ready. Yeah. So you're still you know you're still developing that. But just give me tell me what your heart is saying. So what we've done um, over the past. 18 months, maybe two years now. I don't know. So we've implemented the Joust culture code. Right. And what the Joust culture code is, Joust is an acronym, J-O-U-S-T, journey yeah. students. Got it. Right. And um, each, each letter means something and it's our culture. Yeah. Uh, so what we decided is that it's not a set of laws or yeah. rules necessarily, yeah. uh, but it's a, it's a way that we can kind of define what our culture is. Yeah. And, and what we are is we're Jesus focused. That's the J. We're on a mission. Oh. Unified in spirit, you servant-hearted, yes. and true to who God has called us to be. Yeah, that's so good. And uh, everything that we do, yeah, um, falls. You know, a sermon that I preach or mm -hmm. an event that we plan yeah. has something to do in those five yeah. things. Um, you know, right. for instance, true to who God has called us to be. We just had several students go to fine arts, right, and celebrate the gifts that God has given them. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus focus. You know, the, hey, everything that we do. It, look, if we can get Jay down. Everything else is good. That's it. You know what I mean? We could you have get, a J culture. You get code. Jesus first. Yeah. Everything falls into place. Yeah. And it, it worked out well that way. Yeah. But, but you know, everything that we do is, hey, Jesus is at the center of it. Yeah. Is, is what we're doing honoring to Jesus? Yeah. Is yeah. it, you know, um, on a mission? You know, we, we just talked about the Atlanta mission trip. We right. talked about speed, the light, how we can kind of do those things. Uh, unified in spirit, we always talk about being a family. You know, so we have these fellowship events where recently we went bowling with them. You know, it's things that we can do that mm -hmm. fall into this culture, yeah. right? And, and and kind of where we're at right now is, um, again, summer's busy, right, with camps yeah. and, and right. mission trips and everything. But again, it all falls into who we are as Journey students, yeah. who we are. Um, you know, we, we, we have a separate, our, our Sunday mornings are our fifth through eighth grade. We've just welcomed them in fifth grade. Yeah. And it's been amazing. Yeah. You know, we've had solid 20 kids every week coming yeah. and hearing what we've decided to do with our journey junior high class, our fifth through eighth grade class, is we're going to just run through the Bible in yeah. this year. It's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of information, but we want them to have a background knowledge and know what the Bible is. Because again, if we can... If, that is the core of everything. Like yeah. that is the authority is in His Word. So if if we can have an understanding of what's in the Bible, what it's about, um, I think that that's going to serve them well. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing that. It's been amazing every week to kind of teach them through the Bible. Yeah. We did numbers, for instance, one week, and right. someone was almost half the class was like, "This is not a book in the Bible." Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh. they don't know, yeah. right? They just True. it's just having a an understanding of background yeah. uh, knowledge of what the Bible is. And then on Wednesday nights is our ninth through 12th grade. And uh, we've been, you know, we've had a strong push for speed the light lately. We've, yeah. we've talked about that mm -hmm. um, a few times today, but um, I'm feeling, I'm sensing kind of just in my spirit that the on a mission section mm -hmm. portion of the, yeah. that's really going to take the step forward. Yeah. You know, through speed the light, through missions trips. Right. Um, it's kind of where my heart is. Is yeah. is missions in that right. sense. So, and we're doing something local at Abney Elementary. Yeah. So at the end of July. Yeah, so, July. I think it's twenty fourth. At the end of July. Yeah. Um, we are kind of fixing up Abney. We're fixing yeah. the green spaces up, right. the teacher lounge area. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, one of the largest elementary schools in the parish. How many kids go to uh, Abney Elementary? Uh, Twelve billion. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a it's a lot. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like it's it nine hundred. Yeah, something? something like that. So it's. It's two schools. There's yeah. Little Abney, right. or Abney Early Childhood, right. Is, right. and then Abney. So all in all, the whole campus yeah. is preschool through fifth grade. And then when you pass by it, it's like a small country school. Yeah. But you don't realize the campus stretches like a mile into yeah. the to the green space. So there's, I think Courtney told me 900. No, I think it's 900 students. Does that sound right? Yeah, it's about there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we've adopted uh, Abney Elementary Campus. We're going to uh, spruce up the green space, kind of take care of the outside, and we're going to take care of the teacher's lounge, clean it, prepare it for uh, for the next school year, yeah. and stock it with snacks. And we're going to also collect... Um, the second grade yeah. as a whole, all of their supplies that yeah. are needed. Right. So we have so many people at church that are just yeah. donating paper I, towel I, I rolls, saw the box markers. Sunday, man. The box is running over. People yeah. are bringing school supplies yeah. you know, for second graders at Abney, which is right down the street from our church. And what I found is is it, it, through fundraising uh, with for the mission trip we've done this year, 
it's something about this year. I I just sense that people are more giving. Yeah, we've been. They just want to give to something, yeah. and and we're seeing that even with the supplies that are being collected for Abney. Yeah. it's just amazing. And, and Journey Students is going to be involved with that as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and people are generous, man. I'm, I'm really blown away. You know, we received an offering a couple months ago for our journey India, mm-hmm. and we raised enough in one offering to plant a new church. And it just blows my mind that God has inspired, you know, this generation to give yeah. sacrificially, you know, and our even our students are raising tons yeah. of missions dollars for yeah. Speed the Light and for other ministries. Yeah, I've set a goal of $5,000 for Speed the Light this year. Really? I've told my students there that from go. the beginning of the year. Yeah. We've got a lot of work to do in six yeah. months. <laughs> I won't tell you where we're at, but yeah. we're, we need to pick it up. But I'm excited about there's that. There's amazing things. There's, like we said, Hunter doing his raising yeah. of things. He raised yeah. $150 in three days. Wow. Just by yeah. getting people to throw stuff at him. Yeah, I mean, well, it's the craziest things, uh, right? Teenagers, right? Hey, you know hey. what? If it's going to raise money for missions, then yeah, let's do it. That, that's just amazing. <laughs> that's just amazing. All right, here's the last thing I want to talk about: um, reaching this generation. Uh, generation Z uh, used tech devices, uh, their smartphone, their laptop, and the other computers, uh, 15 hours a week on their smartphone. 13 hours on television and 10 hours on their laptop. So we're looking at 23, 40 hours a week, 40 hours. Mm-hmm. The average it's a full-time job, right? That's what the average Gen Z devotes to tech. Yeah. So what does that tell us? Andy? Yeah. That's, Hey, we're reaching them yeah. digitally. There's different methods that we yeah. can, um, yeah. you know, we can reach in different right. ways that we need to approach. And it. here's what I love. This guy said, he found this very funny, uh, Less than 10% of Gen Z ever receives snail mail. <laughs> they don't even open it. Like, what is this What is this thing with this flag on the corner? Yeah. You know, they don't use mail. Yeah. You know, or you even are, email now. Yeah, email is e-mail's already email's out. Email is an old. Yeah. yeah. Now, if it's not on your app or on your text or, you know, yeah. or something like that, or you're on social media, it, it didn't happen. Implanted in your brain. Yeah, yeah. it didn't happen. Less than 10% <laughs> of them use uh, snail mail. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, I love going to the mailbox. I still do. I'm, yeah. I'm, of course, I'm I'm 100 years old, but I, I love going to the mailbox, man, and checking the mail. You know, yeah, every time see. I do that, it's bills yeah. though, so yeah. I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> I have saved some mail over the years. I have a drawer full of mail uh, cards and letters people have mailed me over the years. I had a much bigger stack before Katrina. She took a lot of my treasured snail mail, but uh, I recollected some since then people who you remember when people had uh handwritten notes oh yeah yeah i had pen pals <laughs> does, does anybody ever do in, that still when i, I was know. in school we yeah. had a pen pal in yeah. india did you yeah, i had a pen pal in india wow in like fourth or fifth grade i don't know you know I, I think they stopped teaching cursive writing in school now unfortunately because i love to get a handwritten cursive letter you know mm-hmm. and it, somebody's just thinking about you long enough to write a note or a yeah. car. So I saved those still, yeah. but they're rare. You know, this generation could care less, you know, yeah. you know, they 40 hours a week on tech and hardly any of them are interested in snail mail. So, yeah. you know, we have to reach a digital generation, you know, that's the, I think that's what our focus has to be, yeah. you know, digital natives never knew life without the internet, mm. you know, and that's your assignment, Andy. Yeah. We want you to help us help journey uh, inside our vision to reach, you know, Gen Z, yeah. you know, to reach um, journey students. So um, had great conversation. Enjoy talking to you yeah. today, man. It's been anything it's you want to awesome. say if we close out? Anything? Can I say a dad joke? <laughs> we were telling dad jokes before <laughs> before we started. Uh, Andy is like the king of dad jokes, which happens to rhyme with bad jokes. Yeah, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, it might right, be tell bad one. jokes. How about you tell one, then I tell one. Okay, I'm and gonna tell we'll the one I told you vote. earlier. See if you, that you like. So most. this one, this one takes some thinking. Okay. So, all right. All right. Here it is. So it's like a smart dad joke. Well, I told it earlier. Yeah. You didn't seem to like it, but I, I think like they're gonna like it. it. Um, but okay. anyway, I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> why couldn't the green pepper compete in the archery contest? All right. Why couldn't the green pepper compete? In the archery contest. I didn't know earlier until you told me. Because he didn't habanero.
I heard laughter over there. That was pretty bad. That was good. That was pretty bad. So good. All right, I have a shepherd joke. Okay. All right, so this man hired a shepherd to watch his sheep. He had 49 mm -hmm. sheep. Okay. And he said, look, I want you to take care of my sheep tonight, make sure no wolves get to them, bring back in the morning 49 sheep. So the new shepherd took them out, let them graze all night, protected them from wolves. The next morning he comes back to his boss, and his boss said, well, did you bring back all 49 of my sheep? He said, no, I brought back 50. He said, you started with 49. How did you get 50? And the shepherd said, well, you know, I always round up. Mine was better. <laughs> no, no, it was not. Habanero, round up. Come yeah. on. You be the judge. You, yeah. know good, you know good humor when you see it. Yeah. You know, I wonder if uh, Gen Z will ever tell dad jokes. Probably I, never. They'll invent new ways to joke. <laughs> maybe like real humor? Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. Who knows? Hey, man, I've enjoyed talking to you today. Yeah. It's been a great conversation. A pleasure. You know, and Journey's passionate for reaching uh, this generation. And yeah. we're so happy to have you on our team. You and Courtney are such uh, a key um, part of our future of re reaching this generation. Yeah. You know, so we're excited to have you on the team and Courtney. And we're looking forward to the years to come, man, of reaching this generation for Jesus. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm Doug McAllister from Journey Fellowship Church. Uh, this is uh, Stories I Didn't Tell Last Sunday, our weekly podcast. Uh, if you don't know uh, about Journey or want to know more about us, check us out online, journeyfellowshipchurch.com. You can also download the Journey app. It's free from your app store. Just type in Journey Fellowship Church in the search bar. Uh, there's a lot of Journey, so be sure and type in the whole Journey Fellowship Church. You can download our app to your smart device. It's free. It's stock full of information and resources and uh, things that you you can do to get involved. You can find a small group. You can give online. You can find our uh, find directions to the campus. Uh, you can watch past sermons. Uh, you can access uh, this blog. We have uh, a, a whole backlog of blogs. If you want to go back and watch some uh, earlier, and you can read my blog uh, uh, at dougmcallister.com. Uh, I do a weekly blog with my uh, my dog Hatch. Uh, he and I have conversations. I walk my dog every morning and he usually helps me to understand life. So I write down his wisdom. That's usually comes out on Thursday morning. Um, but we'd love to get connected with you. If you don't have a home church, you live close to Slidell. We are in Poncha, on Pontchartrain Drive right across the street from the new Walmart. Uh, we are at 3127 Pontchartrain uh, in Slidell, Louisiana, 70458. Come visit us uh, Sunday mornings. Uh, we'd love to worship God with you and get to know you, get connected, and uh, let's serve Jesus together. So I'm Doug McAllister with uh, Andy Ricketts, uh, and from everybody at Journey, we love you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>